Good morning, Internet. Uh, Umbo Dragon here one more time. I said I was going to show you guys how to make a character. I know it's been a while. Um, for personal reasons, I have not been able to get to do videos. Um, but now, um, this is during the time of the coronavirus quarantine. So I have a little bit of time. And uh, my son's in the room with me, Orion. And uh, that's his code name, by the way. He likes to go by Orion. And... Um, He's, uh, he's going to watch, and um, he'll be here. You want to say hi? Yeah, sure. Hello, Internet. Okay, so uh, today we're going to build a character. Um, we're going to go with a regular human instead of going with a non-human so that we don't confuse things and make it easy as possible. Because basically, once you understand the, the mechanics of how to make a character, uh, the rest is pretty simple. Um, those of you who have played role-playing games before... Uh, this should be very familiar to you um, if you've played any kind of D20 based games. Um, for those of you who haven't, well, this might be a little bit new and that's okay. Um, so we're going to start with <clears throat> our characteristics, right? It's just to start with a concept. Uh, I kind of got a concept already. And in order to find a concept, really, you probably should go all the way down to... Um, Let's see, there's a page in here that tells you more or less, uh, okay, on page 28 on careers, it's got all the example careers by cultural background. There's a table there, and you can go ahead and take a look at that. Um, I know I'm going to go ahead and make a physician of some sort, and I believe... Um, that can uh, cross all cultures. and But I'm going to go ahead and go with a civilized culture. Um, we're doing medieval fantasy here um, on a basic level. We're not, we're doing low magic. Okay. Um, or high magic. You can do this high magic if you want to. But this, this is just a generalized way of how to make a character. And I'm using the physician as the career. Um, you'll see why later. <clears throat> but, um, Let's go ahead and start with that. So the first thing on page eight, uh, if we go straight over, right? Um, I'm not going to go into the details of what strength and constitution and size and dexterity, all that stuff is. You can read that on your own. That's not something I'm interested in doing uh, right now because most of you guys that have been playing RPGs pretty much know what those things are. Uh, so we're going to start with um, dice, right? So... On page 8, it tells you there's three different ways of calculating your characteristics. One of them is you can uh, die roll in order, right? And uh, you can assign them to your attributes, or your characteristics, I mean, um, one at a time as you go, right? So I already did that. <clears throat> I did a die roll at a 16 and 11. And for size, you have to roll 2d6 and add 6. For that, I got a 14. Uh, for my dexterity, I got a 12. Uh, for intelligence, you also have to roll 2d6 and add 6. And so for that, I got another 14. I rolled pow, got 14. Cha, got 16. Okay. You add that all together, that's about 97 build points right there. Um, moving on to the second one is a dice roll assign. You can assign the numbers where you want to. Uh, you still have to roll 2d6 plus 6 for size and intelligence. And what you have to do is you can swap those two around, but mine were exactly the same, so I really can't swap them. Uh, 15 for a 15 is about the same thing as a 15, so not much you can do with that. Um, but I did uh, roll them, and I got uh, the two 15s. I got 11, 14, 16, 13, and 15. Uh, and I went ahead and assigned them all the way down. I ended up with 99 points. That's a lot more points than the last one. So 97, 99 and then what I did with a points build, it recommends an 80-point build. Now, if you multiply 7, which is the number of characteristics, there are 7 characteristics, uh, times 11, you'll get 77. So you can put an 11 in every single one. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And then you can add the last 3 points, 12, 12, 12. To the to three of them, you'll end up with this weird point spread: 12, 12, 11, 11, 11, 11. I don't. I wouldn't recommend that. I've done the eighty point spread before, and these come out vastly different. 
Um, you kind of have to be careful with the um, size, um, intelligence, things like that. Because some people want to use that uh, minimum, maximum rule and try to max out their character um, to achieve, you know, something better, um, you know, maybe in combat or whatever. But, <coughs> excuse me, in um, Mithras, you kind of want to have a well-rounded character. Um, it's nice to have high attributes all all down the line. Um, not always possible, but um, you try to do what you can. Um, so what I did was I started with 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, and that's 105 points. I think that's a lot. That's kind of like overkill. So then I removed five points. I came up with 17, 15, 14, 16, 12, 13, 13. That's 100 points. I said, well, that's still a lot. And um, I came down six more points, and I ended up with a 94. But I kind of liked the charisma up one more from 13 to 14 at 95, which is a nice rounded number for me. I've done 95 before uh, for points build which is like my average is either 90 or 95. So that's about where I'm at. And um, I'm actually going to go with the die roll in order, which is this first row right here, uh, 16, 11, 14, 12, 14, 14, 16. And I'm going to go ahead and go straight down the attributes because some people don't know how to do this. And, you know, you start on page 8, you go all the way to page 10, and you're, you're done, okay? So action points. Where do we get our action points from? They come from intelligence plus your dexterity. So my intelligence is 14. My dexterity is 12. Together they're 26. Then I look on the handy chart chart. It says 25 to 36. I get three action points. All right. Cool. All right. Now, damage modifier. What is my damage modifier? Strength plus size. So 16 plus 14 is 30. So I take a look at the chart chart. And it says 26 to 30 is plus 1d2. Experience modifier is only my charisma. Charisma 16. I actually get a plus 1 XP roll modifier. Cool. All right. So we're going to healing rate. My healing rate is my constitution alone, which is 11. And 7 to 12, the average healing rate is 2. All right, my height and weight. So for my height and weight, it's going to be uh, actually just my size. My size uh, is 14. And I can either choose uh, three different builds, body builds here. One is lithe, one is medium, and the other one is heavy. Uh, most of my characters, I choose... One extreme or the other, I don't normally choose um, medium. So I'm going to go with um, lithe in this point, at this point. Um, so my size is 14, and I'm choosing lithe. And so I'm going to make my height the minimum of 181 centimeters. And I'm making my, my weight 70 kilograms all right hit points that would be next but i'm going to skip that for right now all right my initiative bonus is going to be the average of my dexterity and intelligence so my dexterity is 12 my intelligence is 14 that's 26 half of that's 13 so my initiative bonus is plus 13. That's incredible. Normally you roll a 1d10 for initiative, and then you add your initiative bonus. Pretty cool. All right, luck points are based on POW alone. My POW is 14. So I get three luck points. Awesome. Magic is equal to POW. So your magic points, I have 14. And your move is 6 meters if you're a human. Uh, unless uh, your setting dictates otherwise, uh, almost everybody's going to be at 6 meters. All right. 
Uh, so let's go ahead and do the hit points. Hit points are your constitution plus your size. My constitution is 11. My size is 14. That gives me a 25. All right. So then I head over to my constitution and size table for hit points and per, per location. Because uh, this is a per location game. It's not uh, average hit points. You can do average hit points if you want to. Make it simple. Uh, kind of takes a little bit of the flavor of the game away though um and i'll tell you why later if you want to go over combats but um this is kind of cool right here so let's just do this and um when you fill out your character sheet uh it's not you don't have one leg you got two legs so you got to remember that there's you know there's more than one of each of your arms and more than one of each of your legs and so you put the same number twice okay so legs are five hit points Abdomen is six, chest is seven, each arm is four, and the head is five. All right. Now, in your character sheet, you're going to have AP for armor points. Um, so let's say I was wearing a helmet that gave me two armor points. Then I would have a two, you know, slash five. And if I had... um. Something covered my abdomen that would give me three armor points. It would be like three slash six. Um, right. So we have left leg, right leg, left arm, right arm. Don't forget that, you know, because you're going to roll a 1d20 for hit location. So you need to put those on there um, twice. Okay. So don't forget that. All right. So moving along, we have standard skills. Right. And the way you do the standard skills on page 11 is you're just going to go straight down the line, okay? You're just going to add them up because once you get there, you're 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 almost done with all the calculations that you need to do. Is your 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 the the most you have to do is when you get start getting the this all this done, everything else starts to fall in place. All right. So, we're going to start with standard skills, right? Athletics was strength plus dex, which is 30. Boating is strength plus con, which is 27. Brawn is strength plus size, which is 30. Concealed, dex plus uh, pow, which is uh, 26. I got them all the way down. When you get to customs and languages, all right, sorry, I bumped the camera. Uh, when you get to customs and languages, you have to add 40 points to your, to your native tongue and to your custom. So I just put custom 68. Uh, custom is my intelligence times two, intelligence times 2 is 28, plus 40 is 68. My native tongue uh, is going to be your intelligence um, uh, plus charisma, which is 30 on this character, plus 40 will make 70. So any more languages I put on here, you know, I'm going to put up here. So right now I'm just going to put the languages up here. I did all the numbers for all of the standard skills. And unarmed... And combat skill are going to be the same. So my unarmed is 28. Means my combat skill is 28 right now. I haven't added anything else to it. Um, and so. We're going to move on. To culture and community. Alright. When you go to culture. You're going to choose one. You're going to apply cultural skill points. Okay. Your cultural skill points, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about your combat styles in a minute, um, but your cultural skill points often include a combat style, um, not always, like civilized doesn't, you know, I don't think it includes a combat um, style, civilized, um, there is no, uh, there is no combat um, style. Is there? Yes, there is. There is a combat style for civilized. There's combat style for barbarian, civilized, um, nomadic, primitive. Yeah, so they all got a combat style. I thought there was one without one. That's okay. That's that must. I must be thinking about M space or something. Anyways, um, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna add forty again to customs native tongue, right? We've already done. We've already done that. You're going to select three professional skills for our culture. All right. And then if we want to, we can select a single combat style. Right. And then we can distribute 100 points 
uh, among the standard skills, uh, the chosen professional skills in the combat style, uh, increasing the skill 1% for every point spent on improving it, and you can choose how much each skill is improved, but each skill must receive a minimum of 5% and cannot receive more than 15%. Okay, so let's go ahead and go to Civilized. All right, so my standard skills for Civilized are Conceal, Deceit, Drive, Influence and Insight, Locale and Willpower. So, I left out locale. Oh, okay. So, I'm just going to write it up here. And locale is going to be intelligence times two, which is 28. And willpower is 28. All right, so we're going to add that there. All right, those are the standard skills that we're allowed to boost with our 100 bonus points. We can also get a combat style. We got Citizen Legionary, City State Phalangites, Levied Archer, Light Skirmisher, Street Thug, Town Militia. Well, I kind of like Street Thug. Thing about combat styles is you kind of make them up yourself, right? And they're kind of a group of weapons, right? So what does a Street Thug normally can use? He can usually use like a, a dagger. Right. Um, he also might be able to use a sling. What else would a street thug use? Dagger, sling, maybe a short sword. Do I see any weapons and armor? Maybe a buckler. I might add that buckler. Alright. So, from a street thug, I got him with a buckler, a dagger, a sling, a short sword. Those are the weapons he can use, no problem. All right, so street thug is going to be 28. All right, because that's where we started at. And I have to pick three professional skills. All right, there's art, there's commerce, there's craft, courtesy, language, lore, musicianship, and streetwise. Hmm, streetwise, definitely. So if he's taking thug. Street wise, all right. I'm also gonna take lore. I think he's going to take um, butchery. Butcher. How to slaughter a pig, a cow, right? Things like that. All right, and I'm gonna take craft, and we'll figure out what that's gonna be here in just a minute. All right, so I'm going to go over here to my professional skills. I'm going to take a look at craft. And it says, each craft is a specialized form. There's many crafts as there are professions. Like art craft is used to create the subject item. How long it takes, uh, blah, blah, blah. Is there any, are there any examples? There's pottery. Right? I like that. Smith. That sounds cool. All right. So I'm going to call him, uh, one of his crafts is going to be um, metal smith. Metal Smith. Maybe he learned how to make um, knives and such. Particular to the butcher profession and streetwise. Okay, so while we're here, let's go ahead and find out what craft is. Craft is dex plus intelligence. Let's get a number here. Dex and intelligence is going to be 26. All right, lore. Is always going to be intelligence times two. So my intelligence is 14, so that's 28. 
And streetwise is going to be Pow plus Cha. That's 30. Okay, great. Now, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 skills here that I can add 100 points to because that's where we're at. We're almost done with this part, and he has a civilized um, culture background. So I'm going to put civilized. Not a problem. All right, so what I'm going to do, what I, this is how I normally do. You can change this once you figure this out. But here's a very simple method. Okay, so we have four things that we like to do that are part of our profession as a background. So I'm going to add 15 here, which is the max, right? So plus 15, plus 15, plus 15. I'm also going to add plus 15. So this way I can wield weapons really well. Okay. So that's 30 and 30. That's 60 points. All right. Uh, so this is going to be 41, 26 and 15, 41. 28 plus 15 is going to be 43. And 30 plus 15 is 45. All right. And 28 plus 15 again is 43. All right. We have 40 points left. Okay. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. So we'll add 5 points here. That's 30... Sorry, 33, 33, 37, 31, 35, 31, and 33. All right, I have five points left. Let's see, wait, 5, 10, 15, yeah, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, five points left. Uh, let's go ahead and make conceal. We'll give. 2.2 willpower to make this 35. And we're going to give 2 points to insight to make this 35. And I got one more point. And I'm going to give that to... This, ooh, I'm going to give it to... Ooh, hard decision. Okay, so I'm going to make it to give it to conceal to make it 32. All right. So, that's my 100 points. I spent it. Done. Okay. Easy peasy. See how I did that? I did 15, 15, 15, 15 to my combat skill. So this way I have some, um, a little bit of uh, skill, higher skill, I'll be, you know, competency uh, to be able to fight off, you know, the bad guys. All right. We'll go to background events. All right. Um, at 100, uh, 1D 100. For background events, uh, I rolled a 50 several years ago. You were attacked by an unidentified wild beast, which nearly killed you. The creature vanished, but since that time, you felt an ominous presence and wandering the edge of your homelands. Uh, thus far, the beast has not reappeared, yet perhaps it's merely biding its time. What was the creature, and why is it hunting you? Okay, so I am hunted by beasts. That's part of my background, okay? Hunted by beast. I'll put that right there and I'll save that. And that's on page 19. I'll add that later. All right, background event done. Moving on. Uh, social class, starting money. All right, so civilized is 46 plus 75 times 75. All right. That's 9 times 75. All right. It's 9 times 75. 9 times 5 is 45. 34. 7 times 9 is 56. So 605. All right. So I have 605 silver pieces. All right. 605 SP. Okay. So I'm just jotting this stuff down for my starting money. It says families. Um, you can go ahead and roll that up. 
you know. Um, let's go ahead and go with um, passions. I'm going to talk about passions in a separate deal because there's there's a game mechanic that goes with it, right? And it's part of your background as well. So it kind of defines who you are in terms of how you play the game and what you would do, right? I mean, you always have a choice to do, you know, something that has nothing to do with your passions. It's fine, right? But if you want to incorporate it, I'm gonna, I want to talk about that later, right? One of them is a loyalty, right? One is a strongly held belief. And sometimes it's an emotion held towards someone or something. All right, so you have those three different things for your passions. And I'm just going to leave that there and we're going to move on because that's also a number, but it depends on what the passion is, uh, how you generate that number. Um, I'm not going to go through the social class tables. You can go through that yourself. It's kind of fun if you want to go through that. Um, we're going to go to career. All right. So there's a bunch of careers here that start on page 28. Um, and I'm going to go some, some of these are, are pretty cool, but uh, I'm going to go through straight to physician. But what I want to point out is that each of these careers has sort of a, a category, right? Um, like when you say agent, right? Which is the first on the list on page 29. Agent is can also be agitator, can also be assassin, can also be detective, can also be informer, can also be spy. So agent is a general category, okay? Um, you decide what you want to be. So I'm going over to physician. And I decided that I wanted this guy to be a torturer, right? He is a torturer. He knows how to torture people, right? Which makes him kind of a weirdo, which totally is right up my alley. I love those kind of characters. All right. So it says uh, doctor, healer, medicine man, torturer, vivisectionist, blah, 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 dot, dot, dot. Basically, physicians have detailed knowledge of how the body works, although they do not necessarily use that learning to heal. Some instead offer their skills to extract information by coercion or further the depth of their education by questionable practices. I totally like this. Okay, so a physician can take many guises, some examples, meaning the medicine man of a tribe with his totems and fetishes, a local hermit or a wise woman with their knowledge of herbs and poultices or a court physician who can cure fevers and Agues uh, with complex chemical remedies, depending on the sophistication of the culture. Many doctors embellish their treatments with ceremonial theatrics, bogus medications, and manipulative psychology. All right, so I chose torture. Standard skills are dance. That's interesting. 28. First aid. 26. Influence and insight. Oh, yeah. These are going up again. Super awesome. Locale. All right, so this goes to 33. Yeah. You have to make a little more space for that one. All right, and um, sing. La la la. Very cool. He could sing. He's, he's already got a 30. Could be a she. I haven't decided yet. But, uh, yeah. Could be interesting. Alright. And uh, willpower. Which of course you definitely need. Strong willpower. Sounds good. Alright. Professional skills. Commerce. Craft. Uh, physiological specialty. Which is uh, like uh, herbs, right? Uh, no, physiological specialty would be like prosthetics, scrimshaws, uh, torture, and vivisections, etc., etc., etc. Healing, language, literacy, lore, 
uh, specific alchemical specialty and streetwise. Okay, so which ones are going to choose? I have to choose three of these. So we're doing the same thing, basically. Right? It says you select up to three skills for professional skills available to that career. Distribute 100 points among the careers listed standard skills and whatever professional skills were chosen. Increasing each skill by 1% for every point spent on improving it. Not all of the available skills need to be improved, but no individual skills can receive more than 15%. Whew. Okay, so you can further apply points to something you've already got points in from the last one. Okay, however... I believe I don't believe that torture includes any more points for combat skill, which is why I chose combat skill um, earlier. I went ahead and chose it and took it. Street thug. All right. Well, because that made sense to me. Because I knew where I was headed. I had already had a, a concept or idea of what I was going to do. So I'm going to definitely take um, the specific, specific alchemical specialty in lore. I'm definitely going to take the physiological specialty um, in craft. And uh, I think I'm going to also take healing. So craft... All right. And with craft, I'm going to go ahead and take torture. There's lots of devices to use. All right. We know that our base is 26 for craft. All right. I'm also going to take the healing. What do we have for healing? Let's see. As a skill. Healing is intelligence plus power. So that's going to be 28. Good. Almost there. And I'm going to take lore. All right. And that's going to be either herbs, medicines, poisons, Let's go with, let's go with, I think I'm going to use um, mushrooms. So we're going to say mushrooms and their, their, their properties. Because some of them are psychedelic, some of them are poisonous, right? So we know base lore is 28. Okay. All right. So now we get to distribute our 100 points. So we're going to put the first 45 points here, plus 15, plus 15, plus 15. All right, so this is 41. And this one's going to be 43. This one's going to be also 43. All right. So far, so good. And I now have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven again. All right. So this time, though, I have a hundred minus forty five, which leaves me with fifty five points this time. OK, we know we have if we add five points to everything, that's um. 35, which leaves 45, 55, so it leaves 20 points left over. So four of these will get the five-point bonus. All right, so I'm going to start with willpower. I'm definitely going to give that a 10 instead of a 5, so that's 45. Give sing five points. Um... So I have one. I'm going to do two more with the three more. Here we go. First aid. Here we go. 
So I'm going to go ahead and give the 10 points here uh, to each of these three. So this is going to be 45, 47, 36. Okay. And then five points for each of these that are left over, which are these two. All right, because I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is going to be three, eight. Okay. Done. We are moving on to the bonus skill points. All right. At this stage, every character gains an additional pool of five skill points based on age. Oh, free, sorry, free skill points based on age, which can be distributed amongst his existing skills. These are provided so that the character can be rounded out and given particular interests or areas of expertise. The default for adult characters is a pool of 150 points with a limit of assigning no more than 15 points per skill. If characters are younger or older, you can adjust that. The number of bonus skill points do not necessarily need to be tied to age. If characters are to be seasoned veterans, cultural heroes, or even the sons of gods, the game master is free to grant additional points or modify the maximum number which can be applied to specific skill. Bonus skill points are used in the following way. Allow the character the option of choosing one final new combat style or professional skill Reflecting a personal hobby or interest. You don't have to choose an extra thing, okay, but you can. All right. Distribute your points amongst uh, whatever skills you currently have. Uh, that's any of the skills, all right. Um, buy one point for every point spent. No individual skill can receive more points than individual, than indicated by their age category. Uh, so we're talking adults age category. And that would be no more than 15 points. That's your maximum. Okay. Um, let's see. And uh, save for the optional hobby skill. No points may be assigned to those combat skills or professional skills not learned as part of the uh, cultural or career. To the culture or career. Save for the optional hobby skill. No points may be assigned to those combat styles or professional skills not learned as part of their culture or career. Hmm. Don't know what that means. Okay. Anyways. Uh, so we have uh, 150 points here. So I'm going to go ahead and max out all of this stuff here that I find to be professional skills. Right. So I'm going to add 15 to my combat, making it, um, let's see, 50... Eight, is that right? Yeah, 58. Okay. All right, and then I'm going to add 15 points here. All right. Making this 53. 53. Is that right? That's not, that's 58, sorry. I'm tired. 58. Um, and then we're going to add 15 points here to 41. Is going to be 56. All right. Then we're going to go ahead and add 15 points here. Make this 56. Add 15 points here. Make this 58. Add 15 points here. Make this 60. All right. So 15 is 40. It's 30, 45, 45. Um, that's 90. Plus the 15. That we already spent on combat skills, 105. Leaves us 45 points left. All right, so we can do this to nine skills if we want to. We can add five points. So I'm going to add five points to willpower. Uh, make this 50. Make this 40. Make this 50. Make this 52. That's one, two, three, four. I'm going to add 10 points here. 46. One, two, three, four. So that's 20. 
30. I got 15 points left. All right. Uh, 15 points left. Let's go ahead and add five points to athletics. No, no, no. I'm going to stick those 15 points down here. Perception and stealth. All right. So I'm going to add 10 points to stealth. Make it 36. And five points to perception and make it 33. All right. Those are my numbers. The next thing you do is you go ahead and do your starting equipment. Um, you know, you can add cults. You can do other things. Uh, you can add your passions. You go ahead and make those. Um, on page 27 is the character creation summary. Right, character concept number two, characteristics number three, calculate attributes four, standard skills five, culture six, background. Right, role, choose background event, role for social class. Right, parents, family, standing, connections. Right, we'll go over that um, another time because that's a little more involved than just getting your basic character done. Because if you got this done, you you can play. Right, you don't need that other stuff. You can play right away. You're gonna need passions. Um, for those of you who use them, I use them. Most people use them. Um, career, uh, bonus skill points, equipment, and then finally, don't forget to give your character a name. Right, look to establish connections with other characters. Very cool. All right, so that's basically how you make a character in a nutshell. Uh, we'll be back to talk more about um passions and we're also going to come back and talk more about um background all right so hopefully you guys learned enough here to go ahead and make your character take some of the mystery out of that um we're going to approach magic later that's something that's kind of a little more complicated not everybody's ready for that but we will discuss it um because there's multiple magic systems here to work with which is kind of fun and uh, you guys have a great day. Enjoy your games. Um, and I'll talk to you later.